Future Proof is sponsored by Equipping Young Adults for Life, Inspiring Student Resilience, Championing Hope. Hello and welcome back from the break. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood, as I continue this programme uh, talking about uh, a negative mindset that we can all have. I'm actually running through a list and the negative mindset that I've been talking about today is this statement that we often say to ourselves is that my future is determined by my past and that really is not true. Your future does not determine, um, sorry, your past does not determine determine your future. We can change our thinking and change the results that we're getting by changing the way that we think and particularly what we believe. And going into the break, I was running this scenario here about um, saying if um, somebody didn't really believe that they could maybe lose weight um, or they just it was a fait accompli that they were just going to be in this situation, not be able to do anything about it. And the whole belief system affects the D, which if you remember I said was um, uh, standing for dissatisfaction. And because the belief system, if you like, sort of caved in or moved away from any sense of determination or kickback, if, if that's the right word, uh, to the possibility of maybe losing some of the weight that they might have put on during lockdown, then the level of dissatisfaction very often will actually be dumbed down as well and so if you are struggling with change if anybody's struggling with change if you're a business owner and you're struggling with change in an organization then D that is where the problem lies that there is not a high enough level of dissatisfaction to then go on to create the change and it could be maybe not a high enough level of dissatisfaction with you um, and possibly when we monetize for example conflict you know often people just get on and live with it although I do believe with COVID-19 and the change of thinkings um, then you know people have actually woken up and they're sorting out some of the numb stuff if you like that was sitting in and around an office they are now sorting it out but if it's not you with um, a, a high level of dissatisfaction then maybe it's the people or the workforce or the team or the individual that you're trying to inspire to think and behave in a different way that doesn't have have a high enough level of dissatisfaction themselves to do something about it. I have to say though, in this environment, many, many employees, their level of dissatisfaction has raised um, incredibly, uh, not least because many are in fear of losing their job. So where they might have been complacent before, now they know that the market is much, much tighter and they need to work harder and prove themselves. Then the, for them, the level of dissatisfaction or the thought of losing their job suddenly becomes incredibly real. So that number goes up higher. So if I go back to somebody who is talking about losing weight from lockdown, uh, but this time they have a high level of dissatisfaction. There's actually somebody just around the corner from me who has been to see the doctor and the doctor just didn't say that they were obese. They said they were now on the spectrum of possibly being clinically obese. And the doctor was saying, if you want to see your grandchildren, if you want to, you know, you've got your own underlying health issues. And if you want to this, if you want to that, and it really raised this person's level of dissatisfaction with how things are. So they went home and they said to their other half, I now have to do something. And he was in fear of maybe not seeing the grandchildren or whatever else. So let's run with a scenario like that. What's their level of dissatisfaction? Well, if you ask the other half that was hearing the result of this doctor's visit, that number was, let's say, nine out of 10. So therefore, the level of dissatisfaction is much, much higher than somebody who's more complacent. So therefore, what is the vision? The vision then is maybe tied up with seeing the grandchildren. Um, it could be tied up with um, 
uh, just knowing about their own underlying health issues and maybe you know anything from running in the park or what have you but the vision is really start to create a picture of what this new world is going to look like the best way you can do it is to draw it and I have said on previous programs if you can't actually draw it it means you can't see it and if you can't see it then um, it won't happen and remember the brain works in pictures not words it works in pictures so give it a picture that is inspiring um, I'll never forget years ago doing jury service and I was utterly convinced somebody was guilty of um, supplying drugs and actually processing them. Why? Because all the pictures, all the pictures in the house were Al Capone and guns and whatever else. So pictures speak a thousand words. So draw a picture and for this person here, it could be, for example, drawing a bike. Um, I, I'm absolutely useless at drawing, so please ignore me. But you know, drawing as I say the grandchildren, drawing being perhaps older 10 years, maybe drawing a holiday in the future, whatever else and because that then comes alive and I say again remember the mind, the brain thinks and operates in pictures so give it a picture. So then this is where the inspiration is so that energy has then transferred across to the vision, you can see it, you can smell it, you can taste it, you can feel it. So now you're getting all excited and already you can see the energy in the room elevates. So therefore you say, what's the plan? The plan, if this is in the right place, the plan generally speaking, just what we call forms out the bottom. You don't have to work hard on a plan. If you've got the level of dissatisfaction high enough, then the vision will be very good. So that could be another nine out of 10, maybe even 10 out of 10. But the plan would definitely be near a 10 out of 10. You then times nine out of 10 by nine out of 10 by let's say 10 out of 10, then that number sits much higher above a thousand. So therefore that number, I, I'm not gonna work it out now, I'm useless doing things on my feet, but let's say it's 950, I don't know, it will be high. That tells you, because it's a much higher number, that tells you the likelihood of change is now very high. And the main thing then is to just keep going, keep keeping on all those kind of lovely phrases that kind of inspire you. So just to summarize, do not think that your future is determined by your past. Create yourself a new future. Um, take it one step at a time, slices of salami, just one small thing at a time. It's amazing how um, you know slices of salami can eventually um, increase into quite a large piece of meat, if you like. Uh, it's, it's not a waste of time. But also, as you make progress, as your vision, if you like, um, becomes more colourful, has more texture in it, maybe you put some sound into it, um, add some emotions and feelings into it, then it becomes more and more real. The plans then just escalate. So therefore, your slices of salami can turn into chunks of meat, can turn into steak slices, can turn into a joint, if you like. Um, sorry if you're vegetarian, um, uh, but you know what I mean. In other words, you can actually then um, telescope out some of your plans and your dreams, and then you can actually make much bigger headway, bigger steps, bigger strides. So be inspired. And uh, just to show you again some of the tools, this is the DVP, which we have in the Year 10s um, manual when we work with students in business and inspire them to uh, deal with a business issue. This is one of the things that they will go in and do with the directors or go in and do with the head of team. Say, look, you say there's a problem, but how, how, how dissatisfied are you with it? And if they go, well, actually been living with it for years, we just thought as you kids were here, you might be able to sort it out, but it really doesn't matter. The likelihood of any initiative any creative thinking actually being embraced by the workforce is of course very minimal but if they then say actually no we've been worried about this for years we've just been so busy we're so grateful that you're here if you can come up with some good ideas we are listening we want to know then their level of dissatisfaction is higher the likelihood of change and the kids working harder for you by the way escalates 
Uh, so in a previous program, just to show you, uh, there's the magic wand. This is for younger students that I've used it, or I've used it on bigger platforms. And then another tool which I used and I spoke to you about is something called the five whys. And that's if you ask why often enough, you don't just get down to the symptom, you get down to the root cause. Great book by a lovely guy. I know him and uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, Chris Merrington, Why Do Smart People Make Stupid Mistakes? It's a very, very good book and uh, I commend it to you. So um, I hope that you have been inspired. I hope that you are striving for the change that you want. And if you're struggling with any change, either internally, in the family or in the workforce, anything like that, then it's the D, the level of dissatisfaction you need to work on. And usually it's because you don't have a compelling enough reason to actually make the change drive through. Create that to a very compelling reason and you're on the route to success. So good luck.